Why does your attenuator make your amp sound muddy? And also how to fix it. So the first thing we have to get into, the very first thing we have to get into is actually to do with how your ears work. Okay, so this uh, little diagram here, pull it down one. This little diagram here is loudness curves. And what it's showing is quite hard to uh, understand, but don't worry, if we look at the bottom red line at threshold, that's showing what we have to hear as humans in terms of volume in order for us to perceive it and think it's flat. So if you look here at, uh, at the low end of the scale, let me see, where's, is my mouse cursor appearing? That's why is my mouse cursor not appearing? There it goes. Um, I learned that this threshold scale is around, around 100 hertz of guitar here, a little bit low, 80 hertz. We have to hear about 30 decibels just to be able to hear the bass. Whereas at speaking frequencies here, zero or below decibels. So there's a huge gap. If we look up here at a midpoint, so 40 dB, 40 fonds it's called, but no matter. You know, sort of 30 to 40 dB of speech is going to sound the same to us as sort of 70, 80, 90 dB of low bass. So we don't hear things flat and equal. This is a really important thing to understand and it gets worse because as things get louder, we hear things more flat. So when a thing's quiet, we struggle to hear bass and treble, basically. And when a thing is loud, we hear bass and treble easily. So this creates a really interesting thing called the loudness curve or a loudness boost, which is when something's quiet, we boost the treble and bass and it gives us the perception that something's really louder than it is. So our guitar amps don't start out life having anything like this. What happens with our guitar amps is either they're gonna sound thin and weedy at a quiet level, and then when you turn them up, they're gonna sound great and bassy, or we can boost that bass and treble at a quiet level, and they're gonna sound great at a bedroom, and as soon as we get them loud, they're gonna sound horrifically bassy and trebly. We can't win. As you turn them, up, turn them up, they change in tone. Or they don't. They don't change even slightly. But how we hear them changes them. And the manufacturers of your amp know this. They know that the volume of the amp is going to change how you think it sounds. So they have to second guess what volume you're going to play at and try and do something about it. And that's really, really, really hard for them. So the first thing that comes in is something called a treble bleed circuit. And you've probably heard about a treble bleed capacitor. It goes across your volume control. And what it does is it allows extra treble to come through when the volume control is turned down. So at the bottom, it gives us that treble boost that makes us think the amp sounds louder than it really is. And as we turn it up, the treble decreases on our volume control. And so our ears hear that as flat, because as it gets louder, we naturally uh, are more sensitive to it. So at a loud volume, we have less treble coming through our amp. So our amp actually, and this is the key, the treble bleak capacitor rolls off the treble as the amp gets louder. Ah, I think the penny might drop now, hasn't it? But we don't hear it because as the volume gets louder, our ears change. So what happens when we plug an attenuator in? Well, the treble bleed capacitor is still there. It's still rolling off the treble, but now the volume isn't getting louder. So as we turn the volume up on our amp, which of course is what we're going to do with an attenuator, this is the whole point of it, we just think the amp's getting muddy and we blame the attenuator because we've never heard it before. We've never heard that happen before. It's definitely not our amp. We can unplug that attenuator and say, amp sounds the same up and down, plug the attenuator in, now the amp sounds muddy when loud. And it is actually this extra circuit in the amplifier that's, that's doing that. It's wrong off the treble. Worth noting, a similar thing happens with the bass, but we tend not to mind that as much. But we've seen this is why we get the deep control on Marshall amps and similar. I'm using Marshall in particular because um, nearly every Marshall amp I've ever seen has some kind of treble bleed capacitor and it's absolutely standard for them. And of course the deep switch is their other great feature and a lot of us players put the deep switch in when we're at home playing by ourselves and we play live and we turn it off again. And we know we're doing it and now you know why you're doing it. 
because in order to get that loud sound at home you need more bass, deep switch, more treble, bleed capacitor. And when you play live you want the same sound so you have to roll off the treble, done through that, and you have to disengage the deep switch. And all of this of course ends up, whenever we plug in attenuation, going, ruin my sound, it's not transparent. Okay, so how do we solve this? Well, the easiest thing to do is to turn your amp volume control down and boost the input a bit. Because if the amp control volume is physically down, then regardless of the volume, you've got the bleed capacitor in, and we boost the input with a clean boost. This is also a reason to reach out for a treble booster pedal. And you can connect a treble booster, and obviously that's gonna boost the treble on the way into the amp. And then when it hits the volume control, um, and the treble bleed's no longer there because it's at maximum, so we're getting a different tone. We've got treble, extra treble coming through. The treble we expected is there. So these are two techniques we can use to get around that. To some extent, the attenuator can help. So resistive attenuators are brighter, and I sell a lot of resistive attenuators to Marshall owners. This is why it's compensating for um, the design, which there's nothing wrong with the design. I'm not criticizing the design. We're basically defeating the object of the designers who made your amp to go loud physically in every sense. And we're totally fighting against them by making it now quiet. So we're just having to work with them. And yeah, so a resistive attenuator will do that. And again, the switchable inductive options that I put on some of the attenuators, the new 130, for example, if it'll load up, there we go, where I've got this lovely resistive control and I've got blue, green and cream and basically what we're doing here is it's altering the inductive element to create different lost different amounts of treble sort of smoothing and, and reactants to try and compensate for whatever your amplifier is doing. So there you go. The attenuator isn't rolling off your bass, your amp is, but you can't hear it unless you put an attenuator in. It's really that simple. And you know, I'm going to add one other thing on here before I close this little video. Some people just don't like attenuators. And I am totally on board. I understand those people. But I have to say, one of the reasons for this, which I'll come back to, I think, is do you really want an attenuator? What's your goal here? Right? If your goal is to just please your housemates or satisfy your band members, you're never gonna like these things because they're not gonna give you the same sound because all your settings on your amp are different. Everything has to be done differently. If you're buying an attenuator because you want to tone chase, because you want that sound of your amp on the cusp of overload, but without killing you, if you wanna do something cool and creative, if you're open-minded, then you can get a huge amount out of these. But um, yeah, if you're, just, if you're just after the exact same tone you have now, but quieter, they're probably not gonna make you happy. I honestly would just turn your volume down and get an EQ pedal. Cool. All right. I hope that's informative. I've got some more to shoot and add, and I uh, shall see you next time.